Atlantans, Atlantean. For some, it can be a really great way to make some extra travel money. That was the scariest thing ever. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking travel tips. So as you know, I commute between Georgia and Texas for work every single week. So with my commute, I get a lot of good experience as far as like what to do, what not to do while traveling. And I'm here to share those things with you guys. So let's get right into it. My 10 things that I would or would not recommend doing while traveling. The first thing, do not travel in shorts. Um, I would recommend traveling in like jeans or like even like really thick leggings, but like you, you just want to travel with something that is pretty durable as far as your legs. And that's because, you know, God forbid, something happens with your flight and you have to get out of the plane on that slide that slide can be really abrasive to your legs and you can get really bad burns on your legs so it's recommended that instead of wearing shorts and you know leaving your legs to be exposed to that kind of friction that you wear some type of really thick leggings or jeans. I think jeans is probably your best bet. But I know a lot of people don't like to fly in jeans because like, I guess it can be uncomfortable depending on how long you have to sit, but just keep that in mind. Tip number two, avoid checking bags when possible. Like if you, if you can avoid checking a bag, I would say like, try not to do it. And I say that because I don't know, like, I just feel like you just never know. You just never know what could happen with your travel plans. It could be good things, it could be bad things. I always feel like having a check bag will slow me down because like once I send it back there and like it gets on the plane, this is like, it's there. And so if I wanna like change plans, then like I have to go through the airline and try to figure out how to get my bag, if they can get it off of the plane or if it's gonna just go to the destination, I'll have to figure out how to get it from there. It's just a lot logistically and uh, to me that like that's just kind of a nightmare. So I would recommend like just travel with a carry-on as much as you can, at least when you're going to your destination. And you know, just shop when you land maybe. I don't know, I know that's that's kind of pricey so hey, look just a suggestion here and then when you come back to fly back home you know check a bag okay do what you have to do i would think on your way back home since you know you're heading home too much shouldn't change with your plans but hey we're all living our best lives we outside who knows but yeah i would just you know say if you can avoid checking a bag it's just always easy to have your things with you just in case plans change your mind changes, you never know. Tip number three, have at least one credit card with lounge access. I personally use the American Express Platinum card. I swear by this card. Um, I believe it gives you access to more than one lounge. Now, I only go to the American Express Centurion Lounge, which is amazing. With having access to the Centurion Lounge, honestly, I feel like I'm not even missing out on anything with other lounges, but I'm going to try them because I've heard great things, like um, the Delta Sky Lounge. I've heard really great things about it, so I kinda wanna check it out. And from what I've been told, the American Express Platinum card also gets you access to the Delta Sky Lounge. So I'm, I'm gonna try it out, I'm gonna try it out, but wow, like these lounges are great. And I say that they're great because say, you know, you're sitting in the airport for a while, you're gonna be there for a couple of hours, maybe you have a delay, a long layover, whatever the case may be. You can go to these lounges, nine times out of 10, you go, you get free food, drinks, you can chill, relax. Some of them will have like a little office space, like a, a little area where you can take meetings in case you just have meetings that you have to take during the time that you're at the airport. It's really nice, it's a really great experience. I've had some really good meals at the Centurion Lounge. Um, drinks are great, like 
everything's great. If you're interested in this, I will link down below my referral code for the American Express Centurion Lounge. Um, what I like about the referral codes is that they'll give you like promotional bonuses. So when I got my card, I literally just like had to go online and like search like promotional codes just to find some random person's promotional code online so that I could get the bonus. And the bonus I think I got was like a hundred either a hundred thousand a hundred and ten thousand or a hundred and fifty thousand i can't quite remember the exact number but one of those numbers of points um for making three thousand dollars worth of purchases within the six months first six months it was a while ago it was it was it was probably like a couple years ago so i wouldn't I wouldn't harp too much on that but the new member promotions are always great so I highly recommend get what you can out of it honey because I love those lounges tip number four try to avoid as best you can putting any medications electronics or valuables in a suitcase or, or a roller bag I would recommend keeping them in a bag that you could fit under your seat you should not put it in your check bag but i say also maybe avoid putting it in a roller bag in general just in case say the plane gets full you do have to gate check your bag it may be complimentary but your bag's still kind of going under the plane and it's going to be out of your sight so just to be on the safe side keep it in something like a purse a book bag fanny pack just something that you can keep with you that you you know for a fact it just it will not get checked that bag does not have to separate from you like your body I'm not implying that any personnel does any sealing or anything like that but these things if you find them valuable to you I, I just I wouldn't recommend separating from them during travel especially when you're you're traveling to places that you're very unfamiliar with like like other countries and continents and stuff you just you want to keep those things as close to you as possible so medications you know things that you kind of need to live electronics because they're pricey and just other valuables number five when booking hotels i would recommend checking to see if the hotel that you are considering also has an airport shuttle and i say that because i've had to use uber and other rideshare services to get from the airport and it gets really pricey at times like i've seen ubers from the airport be upwards of like 60 something 70 something sometimes near a hundred dollars and it's not for long distances it's really because they already have an airport surcharge and when it's super busy and there are a lot of people trying to leave the airport it just gets more pricey because there's higher demand for those drivers so if you book with a hotel that has an airport shuttle you'll avoid possibly facing those types of charges now i know that the other side of that can be well how much does that hotel cost then if it does have that shuttle that may be a premium service and with that being a premium service the hotel may charge a premium of its own that's a trade-off that you will have to weigh in your own research but i do just want to share this just as something to consider because it can really shock a lot of people and sometimes throw off their plans and they have to consider doing other activities just because they've spent so much money just to get from the airport to the hotel or wherever they're going from the airport if you're also thinking oh well let me book a taxi i know that there are still places where taxis can be dependable they can be safe but i would just recommend being careful i know you can't really say that taxis are any less safe than an uber or a lyft with a stranger but i would just say be careful i've definitely been in places where i've walked outside of the airport got to where the ride sharing or the, just the general pickup is and there were drivers that seemed particularly aggressive and that type of aggression was really scary it really didn't give um you know just here to take people from point a to point b tip number six this one i really need you to listen up if you haven't already have you guys ever been at like the gate for your flight and they say hey we're looking for people who would take this thousand dollar 
$800 credit or incentive or something and give up their seat. Yes, these offers can be really great and really lucrative at times. I'm not advising against them. I think that for some it can be a really great way to make some extra travel money. However, there is another side to taking that offer. So when you agree to be bought out of your seat, how do you get to your destination? A lot of times, and this may not be with every airline, definitely check those airline policies or consult with your gate agent before you accept. But once you agree to be bought out of your seat, what could happen is for you to get to your destination, you may not have a guaranteed seat on that next flight that they're giving you. What may happen is that you are left to take what seats are available on that plane once it's filled up or once they've looked at the flight and they say, okay, here are all the people who have tickets, what do we have left over? That, depending on why you're traveling, can be really scary. If you're going on vacation and your vacation is flexible by a day or two, this may not be a problem. But if you're going to a really big family event, whether it be a graduation, a wedding, or a funeral, taking those risks can really put a wrench in your plans and could possibly even keep you from getting to your big family event. So while it may be lucrative, depending on your reasons for traveling, I would maybe think twice about what you're risking when allowing yourself to be bought out of your seat. Number seven, this one is personal. So when you're traveling, I highly recommend that you check the average wait times for like security TSA for the airports that you'll be going through security for. So this won't be airports usually, not always, but usually this isn't airports that you're connecting through. This is usually the airports that you're either going to to start heading to your destination or the airport at your destination that you're now coming out of to get back home. So the reason why I say this is because even though you may have had maybe a 30 or 40 minute wait at your home airport, that is not guaranteed at all airports in this country or in the world. I have had a variety of experiences as far as my TSA wait times. Um, well, I'll say security in general because if you go outside of the country, it's not TSA. They do have their own security authorities, but it's not, you know, TSA. So I've, I've been in security lines that were no wait, little wait, long wait, and I've been in one that was so long that I missed my flight. And this was maybe three or four hours. I'm not kidding. Now, I remember distinctly because this happened to me in Paris. I was leaving Paris and someone told me before I even traveled to Paris, hey, make sure that you check the website for the airport to see what their average security wait time is. And I was like, I, I, don't, I don't need to do that because I'm going to leave the hotel at a good time get to the airport a couple of hours early, like it's gonna be fine. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a proactive person, it's, it's gonna be good. And that's what I did. I got there about two, two, maybe two and a half hours early because I know that there's a language barrier and it was going to be a bit of a struggle for me to maneuver. That was not enough. The security line at the time was so long. It was literally three or four hours. And by the time I was getting through like the actual part where the security is, I couldn't get through because my plane had already left. So when I was trying to scan my boarding pass, they're like, we can't let you through, this plane's gone. And basically they wanted to send me to the back of that three or four hour line I was about to cry. I was like, wait, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I had to like get on my phone and like rebook on the phone, like right there. I'm so grateful someone like saw me like struggling with my English and just frantic and just let me sit down. And they're like, hey, like here, sit here, figure it out. And then like, we'll figure it out. So shout out to the French. Love you guys, you're so nice. So I had to rebook my flight and then scan my boarding pass with my new flight to get through security. Y'all, it's not a game. Check those wait times because you do not want to get stuck in that situation and then they send you to the back of a three or four hour line. You will never get home, ever, okay? Don't be like me and that's not just for overseas. 
do that here domestically too because it would surprise you some of these airports that you know you just you just have one idea of how it's gonna be and it'll be another number eight is a big one on safety so when you are in airports ladies especially turn off your bluetooth i know we love our airpods and all of our other bluetooth wireless devices but turn off your bluetooth and just wait it out okay and i say that because i was in the airport once just just walking heading home and i got a notification on my phone saying that someone's airpods were with me no one's airpods were with me but it said someone's airpods were with me and that the person who owned the airpods can see my location for the purpose of tracking these airpods that was terrifying that like that was the most terrifying thing because you can't turn it off if you have an apple iphone you cannot turn that off there's there's nothing you can do to stop that person from being able to see your location so my only resolution i've been able to find is just like turning off my bluetooth when i'm in the airport that way you can't even have airpods checking for me i hope that logic is right though y'all definitely fact check me but that was the scariest thing ever i i also checked my bags my purses i checked my pockets nothing was there just just turn your bluetooth off don't even leave it open for someone to try to use bluetooth or other devices to follow you number nine i feel like this one is kind of funny so one time i got on this flight and I boarded a bit later and when I got on the plane um, it was like a couple and the couple was sitting on the row that I was going to sit on and one person in the couple was in the window seat and the other was in the aisle seat I was going to sit in the middle seat and they were like oh no we saw this thing online and someone basically said if you book the aisle in the window seat that it like reduces the odds of someone booking the middle seat because no one wants to sit between two people. I am here to say, especially in the middle of these really busy summer seasons, that's not realistic. If you want to sit next to someone, book your seat next to them. Don't, don't do that because I'm pretty sure they were very disappointed that I came and sat between them. I would have definitely let them like sit next to each other. I think I may have even, I don't remember how it played out, but I do remember being like, oh wow, yeah, no, I'm, I'm so sorry that you saw that online because no, <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. You will nine times out of 10 end up pretty disappointed. Like I said, especially during the summer season, the spring and summer season when travel is really busy. There's just high demand for the seats. It's it's not gonna work out in your favor a lot of those times. Book the seats that you want. Don't, don't try to play those games with something that you're basically leaving up to chance. It's not a good gamble. Especially if you have kids that you're traveling with, don't. Don't do that. The biggest concern I think is that everyone isn't willing to give up their seat, that middle seat that they booked, that they paid for, if you do this. And if that's the case, there's really nothing that you can do to change the seats around like once you're on the plane, you can ask. I feel like you can ask, but I mean, as far as I know, you have the seat that you purchase. I could be wrong. Maybe there's something, something else that can shake. But to my understanding, when you pay for a seat, that's the seat that you got. And you can't, you know, say, oh, well, I had this intention, so I actually want this seat once someone else has already paid for it. So be very careful of that. Use your good sense when taking this internet travel advice. Even mine, even mine, use your, use your good sense. Number 10 is a bit of a local hack. So you guys know I live in Atlanta. I love Atlanta and all things Atlanta. And I travel out of the Hartsville-Jackson Airport quite a bit. And with doing so, I have been able to get a really good idea of the busier days and not so busy days traveling out of that airport. 
So to help you guys out, to help out my fellow Atlan Atlantians, Atlanteans, we'll just go with it. To help you guys out, the least busy days that I've observed at Hartsville Jackson are Tuesdays and Wednesdays. If you're leaving out on a Tuesday or a Wednesday out of Hartsville Jackson Airport, the crowds are generally smaller. I always recommend as far as travel times, just travel as early as possible. Now the most busy day to travel through Hartsville Jackson Airport is Friday. Friday, ooh, just come with patience and come very early to make sure that you make it to your flight. I'm not talking 45 minutes or an hour before your flight leaves. That's that's too soon anyway. Don't Don't be out here doing that. That's what I have for you. Those are my 10 travel tips to get you on your way this summer. I hope you guys have the most amazing trips, vacations, all of that. And if you have any questions about anything I said in this video, please feel free to comment down below. If you disagree, if anything I said is crazy or doesn't make sense, comment it down below. I am still traveling, so I also need as much information as I can get to be an informed traveler. So let's make this a community, guys. Thank you for watching. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you love these tips and want more. I have so much more in store for you guys. I'm so glad to share this time with you, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys.